Okay, what we're looking at here is electromagnetic induction in a in an asymmet asymmetrical state. And what do we mean by that? What we mean by that is um, symmetry is the mirror image of itself. Um, and symmetry is something that is pushed by science um, because it is seen in nature, but at the same time we have things that are asymmetrical in nature, uh, which don't really get much um, much light of day. Anyway, uh, this video here was um, a, a lead up to it, a lead up to what is going on. So if you go and have a look at our channel, um, above Unity and High IQ Research Channel, I've renamed the channel. It used to be HighIQ.org. Okay, so it is a it's a rename. Uh, okay, so asymmetrical transformer. What do we mean? Okay, symmetry is where we have mirror image. So the mirror image of this coil would be mirror imaged in this coil. So that would be primary, that would be secondary. Turn for turn, the current on the output would be equal and opposite to the primary, less losses. Okay, so losses might include um, a bad coupling, um, uh, resistive losses, um, hysteresis losses in the core, um, various other different losses as well. So losses normally are, are reasonably small. Um, a very good transformer can be up to about 97% efficient. Uh, that means um, extremely good coupling, extremely uh, tight uh, core, um, and good laminations, good um, good everything. So uh, their, their best design possible been about 90%, 97%. All right, so I want to thank everybody first of all. I think um, I think that's important. We we have a an excellent crew. Um, our forum members are some of the nicest people I've ever met. So I want to thank them very much. Um, you're all fantastic. Um, I very much appreciate all your contrib contributions. It's fantastic. So this is um, SL Solar Lab. Um, this video is in response to his. Uh, post. I, I sort of hope to cover some things in the video that um, really couldn't be covered properly uh, in a in a post. Uh, so I'll be posting this video um, in response to Solar Labs' um, response there. If you haven't seen the video, go and have a quick look. Um, basically, what I'm I'm showing people here is um, electromagnetic induction. Now, uh, any any magnetic field that's changing in time, okay, any magnetic field that's changing in time can be a source magnetic field for another conductor that might be brought into proximity to that magnetic field that's changing in time. Okay, now the current through the primary coil, as the current changes, the current uh, through the turns, okay, is um, defining the magnetic field as it changes in time. So the more current through these turns, the higher the magnetic field will be. We can't go too high because if the core saturates, then we sort of run into run into trouble. Uh, okay, so remembering any magnetic field changing in time can be a source for another um, coil. Okay, because Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, the time rate of change of the magnetic field, which is the time rate of change of the current in the coil, uh, it's equivalent. The current through the coil creates the magnetic field. Okay, they are the same thing effectively. Without the current, you have no magnetic field. Okay, and it won't change in time. You don't have a transformer. So the critical thing is a magnetic field changing in time. Okay, bring in a conductor. Uh, in proximity to that magnetic field and that conductor will generate it will have an EMF generated on it which is a voltage on the terminals okay the magnetic field changing in time over here the change in time creates a voltage okay this video explains some of that so please go and watch it it does not create the current okay the voltage potential on the terminals Okay, V over R 
equals I. Okay, so the higher the potential created here, the higher the current will be through the coil. Okay, R is the resistance, okay, and that's the circuit resistance of the coil, and including this resistance over here. Um, okay, so uh, Faraday's law of elect electromagnetic induction does not predict current. Okay, it's a voltage only um, law. Uh, current is predicted by Ohm's law. Okay, I've been through that a few times, so please, um, that's re it's really important to understand that. And again, it's the time rate of change. If you have a magnetic field changing really fast in, in the proximity of this conductor, the voltage will be higher, okay, relative to the actual transformer, because some transformers may not handle the high, high frequency. Um, a magnetic field changing in time very slow will create a voltage, an EMF, on this coil that's very low. Okay, so it's the time rate of change of the magnetic field that creates the voltage. Okay, it's a bit reversed. Uh, effectively, you can say time rate of change of current in this coil creates a ch time rate of change of voltage. Okay, because the voltage as it's changing will be equivalent to the current changing. Okay, so current changing equals voltage changing. Changing back to front, isn't it? Anyway, uh, Solar Lab. Um, I've already actually done a video. Um, I have a new microphone. I don't know if you can tell. Um, a very good microphone, to be honest. A cheap one, but it's really good. I'm very happy with it. Um, and it was set on the wrong uh, wrong channel, so I couldn't couldn't get the video um, with the audio up. Anyway, what I want to describe, what I want to cover uh, in response to your video to your post um, first of all I agree with your post first of all I think you've got a lot of very good common sense um, uh, statements in there uh, anybody else reading I, I strongly encourage you to read it properly and go through and, and actually study what's actually being said in here um, I agree with it um, anyway first of all Mr. Prever experiment we're going to do it a bit backwards okay so uh, Mr. Prever experiment when these two coils are resonant, okay, 180 degrees out of phase, exactly, the current over here is minimum and the current over here is maximum. All right, so 2.3 amps, 5.1. Okay, so we have a, a forward current on this coil, um, not quite double, but nearly double of that. Okay, 2.8 times 2 is nearly, what's that? 5.7 or something like that. Um, 5.6. Okay, and that's 5.1. So the current over here is, is nearly double the input current, and that's only at resonance. So resonance is really, really important. Finding that resonance point um, in the coils is a little bit of a trick, and I'm going to cover that now. Okay, first of all, uh, Don Smith told us about this. Floyd Sweet told us about this, okay, in the case, in sorry, in the specific case of positive charges moving to the right and negative charges to the left, the effect of both actions is positive charge moving to the right. Okay, current to the right is uh, I uh, equals dA positive over dT plus dA negative. Okay, so he's defining a positive and a negative current. DA is the um, time rate of change of the charged particles um, being the current and it's over DT. Okay, so he's giving us an equation there. He's basically saying um, add the two currents together as they're ch changing in time. Negative electrons, which is a uh, interesting statement because he's defining one type here. Um, so negative electrons flowing to the left contribute to the current flowing to the right. Very interesting statement. Anyway, the experiment, uh, John K1, I just want to shout out, thanks very much. This is his channel. Please go and give him a thumbs up, all that sort of thing. Uh, the Mr. Prever experiment was something that he translated. Okay, so go and give him a visit, give him a thumbs up, all that sort of thing. Um, it would be great. All right. 
So, Mr. Prover experiment, coil's got to be in resonance, okay, that's something that we've learned, it's something that um, anyone that's done the experiment will will see, will understand, will know what's going on here. It's, um, it's an extremely interesting uh, experiment to perform and to study in depth, very, very easy to pass by, uh, very, very easy to just, oh yeah, okay, she's alright, she's just another transformer, but it truly isn't. It, there's much more to it. It's you really need to study it properly to to make sure that this is understood properly. Otherwise, you just won't understand it. Um, anyway, uh, that's probably enough on the Mr. Prever experiment. All right. So coils in resonance. Now, um, what we have done is we've covered delayed conduction. Okay, delayed conduction and bucking coils. Basically what we're sort of trying to do here, what we're trying to aim for um, is one of the coils um, won't conduct um, straight away. So one of the coils has a delay in the conduction and there's a reason for that. The reason is that we want the L3 coil to see the L4 coil as a primary. Okay, so the L4 coil will be carrying a current. It's got a a light, a resistive load attached to it. So as L2 changes in time, um, I'll show you the pulse in a minute. As L2 changes in time, L4 will be conducting the current. The voltage will be increasing on the terminals. Okay, I'll show you that in a minute as well. Voltage here on L3 will be increasing over time. And then when the voltage is sufficient to make the TVS conduct, when the TVS conducts, L3 will carry a current. It will be effectively short-circuited. The short circuit um, will effectively look at L4 as the primary. Okay, And because the pulse that we put in, these two coils will be resonant, 180 degrees, resonant out of phase. They will buck each other Okay, because L4 will be the primary for L3. And what happens is because the um, reduced impedance effect, which I'll show you in a minute, the reduced impedance effect means that these two coils, because they buck, they can climb up to a very, very high potential on the coil on the terminals out here. Very, very high potential because they're resonant. And we've got to remember the resonance is maximum amplitude. Okay, and the time rate of change of the magnetic field very, very fast. We have a very high potential uh, on the terminals, so we have a very strong magnetic field in here. And then what happens is this is upside down. So this bottom one here is needs to be turned up, and I have turned it up. It's turned up at the bottom. I'll show you that in a minute. But anyway, we start off here with zero voltage. Input is switched on. It climbs. Okay, somewhere in here we get to the TVS conduction voltage. Okay, at that point when the TVS conducts, the coils are in a resonant state all the way up to here. Okay, and the amplitude here is seen as um, as resonance, as magnetic resonance. 180 degrees out of phase exactly. They buck, they go to maximum amplitude, and then what happens? The input is switched off. Okay, at this point up here. And then the coils are left to go all the way down. So from a high potential here, the coils um, effectively buck each other, but, but in reverse. So the, the magnetic field is, is decaying over time, okay, and goes back down to zero. Um, this is the... We've covered it in, in a lot of detail. Okay, so again here, this is the voltage. So we, we the voltage gets up to a very high potential. Okay, and this is resonance. So this is where your part and the output coils are in resonance, and then it reduces over time. Okay, and this is power in here. You've got to remember that every every time we have a potential, we have bucking coils, the reduction over time is going to be linear. It's a linear decay, and everything under that curve is power. Okay, it's voltage times current, which is in phase and pure, pure power, power that is generated right from the source of 
um, right from the source of the atomic structures themselves inside the coil. So we're accelerating electrons down the wire. Uh, okay, so very short input pulse. The very short input pulse uh, brings the coils into a, a semi-resonant state just for a short period of time. The coils are tricked into opposing each other okay, by the delayed conduction in this case. And the delayed conduction is enough to get the amplitude up of the uh, coils because it's it's resonant. So at resonant at any resonant point, the amplitude will go up to a maximum value, um, and then it will decay when the input is turned off. So this is decay phase. Okay, this is the reduced impedance effect, or at least what I call the reduced impedance effect. Um, this is a very interesting experiment. It's something that's worth um, worth looking at in detail because understanding this is is of great benefit. Basically, uh, very simple, very 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 simple experiment. We have a coil uh, with two windings on it. The two windings are almost exactly the same. I'm pretty sure exactly the same uh, measurements were taken. Um, two windings, the bifiler, same length, same wire, same everything. Um, now, winding the, or at least uh, uh, connecting the wires like this, um, putting a, a transformer together like this, uh, and making it non-inductive or inductive. So this is uh, an inductive mode, where the uh, coils are wound in series, and the inductance is here. You can see, so 50% uh, duty cycle, we've got a ramp up in the current as we detect the current and then a switch off. So up here we we're about roughly about sort of 99% or whatever it is. Um, that period in between there and there, okay, each one of these, each division on the scope is 50 milliseconds. So we're what are we? 50, 60, 70, hitting 90, 90 milliseconds. Okay, for the current to rise in an inductive coil. Okay, so the key, key word there is inductive. Now, go to the second one where we wire the transformer to be non inductive. Okay, same input, same everything, same circuit. All we've done is just change the wire and then we have a very, very different result. First of all, 500 microseconds is the division. Okay, so from here uh, all the way over to here, we're 500 microseconds. Uh, we're roughly about 600 microseconds as, as far as I can see there. And, and that's not including the point. So this, this you know, decay here is, is inclusive of that time. So we're, we're seeing a huge, huge difference in current, the current can go through the coil much, much, much faster, okay, when it's in bucking mode. So the current through the coil is much faster. We're, we're looking at a, a magnetic field that is cancelled in the, in the coils because each coil is non-inductive, but the coil uh, is able to allow the current to go through much, much, much faster. So compared to 50 milliseconds, we're 500 microseconds here. So it's much, much faster. Okay. Now this is important because basically what we are seeing is in the um, in the diagrams and in the experiments that we're doing, uh, we are seeing a time rate of change which is extremely fast. So we're climbing up to a very high potential, which is very fast, which I've just explained, and this is why. Okay, because we don't have magnetic fields um, uh, that are slowing the current down. Okay, so by bucking, by having a bucking coil, we can get the um, the amplitude of the current up much much faster. Okay, so we're, we're effectively seeing no reactants in the coil that's causing the current to slow down. So it's non-reactive. It's a reduced impedance effect.
because reactants essentially is part of the impedance. Um, so yeah, so it, it's it's a really uh, interesting effect to study, and the effect that we are seeing is um, essentially is our. Let's have a look if I can find it. Uh, is our Sorry, we're doing a backup. It, things are a bit slow at the moment, so I, I do apologise. It should be a bit faster than this. A big backup at the moment. Uh, okay, so what we're seeing is we're seeing the, the magnetic fields change very, very much faster. Okay, so we're seeing a, um, a an increase from zero up to peak magnetic field. Here we go. So we're seeing from zero up to peak magnetic field. Now this is when the two partnered output coils are bucking and they're bucking at a resonance rate, 180 degrees out of phase at, at resonance, magnetic resonance. Okay, and we've tricked one of the coils to oppose the first um, uh, partnered output coil. So one of them is assisting the primary coil. The primary coil is, is just an excitation. It's just it's exciting the coils um, to move into a resonant state. For example, uh, if you had an LC circuit, um, so a, an inductor and a capacitor, um, LC, um, let's say one farad, let's say one henry. Okay. Now, if we put a very small coil around one of the, or at least around the, the main coil, and if we excited that coil, the small coil, if we excited the coil so that the LC tank circuit was in resonance at the frequency that it wanted to be in, so if we excited that coil to go into resonance with the capacitor, we would see a reduction in the current consumption on the input coil. The input coil would, would go down because the resonance effectively would be um, assisting, if you like, the primary input coil. So it's the same phenomena. Uh, we're looking at magnetic resonance. Once the magnetic resonance has been achieved, uh, that's the key key factor. Magnetic resonance in this small area here, key factor. The input, all it really does is trigger the coils to get to start a voltage to, to, to produce an EMF. Um, once the EMF is sufficient, the TVS in the, in the MEG will conduct. Um, the second partner output coil is uh, set up so that the um, coupling coefficient is greater to the first partner output coil than what it is from the um, primary coil. So the first partner and output coil because it has a magnetic field that's changing in time already because it's loaded um, basically that will create an EMF um, on the other coil which will then oppose it so they're in resonance this part here is 180 degrees out of phase they move up very very fast to peak amplitude peak amplitude is um, the peak amplitude because of the resonance input then is switched off and then when the input is switched off, we see a linear decay over time. And that's when the two magnetic fields are opposing each other. Um, the voltage decays, so the current then decays. Um, and over time, um, the magnetic fields reduce. This is asymmetrical regaging. I've got lots of videos on this already. Um, again, this video is in response to Solar Labs. Um, post. Now we've done lots of very interesting experiments. Um, again this is when a wave is coming in like this okay and a wave already has come in but the wave is actually coming back. There's a certain point and when the waves are traveling at a certain speed that the amplitude will go up as high as possible. That's a standing wave. Um, bucking magnetic fields are standing waves. It's the same thing. It's the same exactly the same thing. Um, now this is the only thing that I've found in nature that describes what we're trying to do. It's the only thing. I haven't found anything else. 
Um, again, lots of good experiments. We've, we've seen some good stuff. Um, everybody's doing a fantastic job. Uh, just want to point out um, this is not new. Okay, this is the Floyd Suite. This is 1995 um, bucking coils. Okay, you can see that they buck there. Slightly different circuit. Okay, and the magnets. Um, in my experience, the magnets really just produce a potential on the core. Uh, they can add energy in some cases, but um, you don't need them. They they don't have to be there. You can do it without them. Um, but hey, play with magnets anyway. See see what you get. Don't don't forget that this is old information. Uh, 1995. This is something that I've studied for a long time. Uh, page eight of the March 1995. Uh, volume 2, November 11th, New Energy Newsletter. So there you go. We've been told about this for, for a long time. Um, again, um, the PCB traces on a circuit board is something that we see all the time. Okay, Every time there's a, there's a change in this trace over here, this trace here is going to try and oppose it. Okay, So current moving that way at a high rate of change. This one over here is going to want to have a current moving that way at a high rate of change, so it's going to oppose it. Um, and this is sort of what we see, description of it. Um, all right, some other work. Let's go see if we can get to the top. Now, um. Uh, again, this is not new. This is old technology. All I'm doing is, is sharing something that I've learned from other people and um, on the bench. Uh, if if you do it right, it's it works. It it's it's over unity and it's it's going to change the world, whether people like it or not. Um, it's coming. Uh, the planes that I've got are long term. That they're, they're not short term. They're long term. So it's coming. Um, now this uh, image took me a long time to put together. This image was something that um, I thought about for a long time. It tells a lot of information. First of all, the input coil, the green coil, very few turns. Second, the output coils, lots of turns. Okay. Third, the output coils have to have bucking magnetic fields. You have to have it. If you don't have it, it's not working. Okay, third is we have a terminal, terminal, terminal. Okay, there's lots of different wiring configurations that you can set up with this, but at the end of the day, the, the basics are there. Have to have magnetic fields opposing. Okay, uh, again, the coils are in resonance. Okay, 180 degrees out of phase. The phase shift must be 180 degrees out of phase for resonance. And once you're in resonance, or at least once you trigger that resonance point, um, that's when the 180 degrees comes in, the amplitude will go up, and you have a um, set of bucking coils that um, potentially, if you've got it right, will give you free energy, excess energy, greater energy output than what you put in. Um, and it's been proven many, many times. So what I'm sharing is is uh, in many machines. You can see it um, in a lot of places. Okay, I've done, this is electromagnetic induction before. I've done all that, covered that in different videos. So if you're not familiar, I um, recommend you go and have a, have a look. I've got tons of videos on my uh, website. Um, a cooler used the Black Sun. Um, Black Sun is important. Um, Black Sun indicates um, charge being accelerated um, at a um, uh, on a sawtooth waveform. Okay, and that is scientifically proven that they radiate the lines from the charge. The the lines actually turn out to be the Black Sun. Uh, so it's a very important symbol. A cooler had inside information. Uh, real, real quick, I, I'm probably not going to do much much more at this stage, but really, really quick. 10 volts here. Uh, L2 is pulsed uh, in the fashion that we saw in the um, data before. 
Okay, short pulse goes in. Okay, it brings the uh, potential, the voltage potential up on these coils. This coil will conduct because it's got a load on it, and this coil will carry a current. Okay, once the potential is high enough on the coils, the TVS over here will conduct because the potential on these two terminals here are sufficient. Once it conducts, it will see a short circuit. You get a short circuit out of it. Now L3 needs to see L4 is the primary. So these two coils will be in resonance. Okay, this one 180 degrees from that one. Okay, so yes, resonance. Um, these two coils have to interact together. Uh, now, force in, in nature, it's, it's, there's always a one-to-one. A -one. So for a reaction, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, it's right throughout nature. But um, with this machine, what we're doing is we're tricking, or at least we're fooling the coils into thinking that the opposite coil is um, its partner. So equal and opposite. So L3 is the secondary to L4. L4 is the primary to L3. Okay. L2 is an exciter that excites L4 uh, to bring this effect into, into resonance. Okay. L4 carries the current. L3 is mutually coupled closer to L4. So L3 sees L4 as the primary. And when it conducts, okay, when the voltage is high enough and the TVS conducts, L3 becomes a short circuit. And the same happens when they flip flop. So when it flops over to this side, same deal again, but in reverse. Well, sort of anyway. Anyway, um, this is the uh, modification that I've done. I put modified by Chris for it illustration purposes. Um, I think that's important to do if we're going to modify images, make sure that we are clear about what we've done to it. Now all I've done is flip the the vertical on this so that you can see from zero up to here where the coils are interacting together. This is the regauge region. Okay, regauging is is getting the potentials on the coils as high as possible with a little bit of help from your input, okay, and then letting it go. So from here to here we have output. From here to here we have input. So the input is tiny compared to the output. Okay, which is the video that we saw just before. Okay, um Tin Man's um, version. Okay, this is the zero line, zero gradical line here. This is where the scope, uh, the probe was um, attached to. Okay, so we can see from down here that there's been a trigger. Okay, and the two coils have interacted together to go all the way up there in a very, very short time frame. So the peak amplitude up here where the two coils have been in resonance. Okay, and then the resonance drops because the input effectively, the rotor has gone around, um, the, um, the input is not, no longer coupled to the output and the output drops like that. So it's a linear decrease over time um, at the top. Asymmetrical regauging, Tom Bearden's, um, I, I would say famous because I look at it probably a hundred times a day. <laughs> Work region, regauge region. Okay, so again, you can see there's a huge difference in time. So we might pop a little little bit of power into here to get this to happen. And then from there on, it's all let it go and let it do its thing. Graham Gunderson, same deal, exactly the same deal. So this is this regauge region in here. Regauges um, up to a very high potential, and then the potential falls again. So he's, he's triggering, if you like, the two coils to interact together to shoot up as high as possible. So it's, a, it's effectively it's a transient, okay? The, the time rate of change in the magnetic field, very fast time rate of change, so a very high spike. 
Okay, potential very high, and then it falls down again. Um, again, uh, ten man. Whoops, ten man. Um, the Meg. Again, this is the famous video. What he's sort of saying there is he's putting um, different signals in to get different signals out. Non-linear medium, and that's exactly what we're doing. It is so non-linear; it's just not funny. Um, okay, the, the, this is something I've shown before. Is um, this is the sawtooth waveform that I've shown? Different device, um, but you can see that there's a linear decay over time when the power is um, is, is is opposed by a magnetic field that changes in time sufficiently. Um, okay, again, the Black Sun um, sawtooth waveform. If the point charge is being accelerated, okay, and it's being accelerated in a sawtooth waveform, the lines of force, okay, that uh, radiate from the point charge, gives us the black sun symbol. Okay, black sun symbol there, ancient symbol. This is as, as old as mankind, and probably older, probably much older. Ancient, ancient, ancient. Okay, so again, interesting stuff. Again, the last one Akula showed us. Okay, famous part of the output coils. The length of wire indicating. Okay, so the black wire might have been this coil. The red wire might have been this coil. Okay, and obviously the mutual or the, the coupling coefficient between the coils is different. Compared to the compared to the um, input coil, sorry, you can only see half of that. Okay, famous um, the um, Mr. Prever experiment, uh, famous experiment. Again, um, uh, Don Smith, Floyd Sweet, the whole lot told us about this. That this is something that if you were reading the documentation and paying attention, they both tell us about this in the documentation. Um, all right, I think that's probably enough there. Um, sorry, we're just scooting through stuff that you've probably already read mostly. Not going to be a long video, I think. This is something that um, it, it's silly. I, this guy has done a fantastic video. He's got copyright slapped on this video like you wouldn't believe. Um, look, go and watch this video. Do a search for shockwave shadows in ultra slow motion um, bullet something. Um, but anyway, what this is, is this is the bullet here. Okay, it's from a high um, caliber uh, weapon. And what they've done is they've, they've filmed the bullet moving past a mirror. Okay, so there's a mirror behind this. It reflects the um, it reflects the um, the image back to the camera, high-speed camera, really, really fast. Okay, obviously. Now, this bullet, if you were to imagine that this bullet was one electron, and this one electron was moving through the wire at the same velocity or even faster because they tell us that it's the lowest speed that they travel through the wire. Uh, antenna theory uh, depends on it. If antenna theory is, is wrong then the speed of light is wrong as well sort of thing. Anyway, the current moving through the wire at the speed of light will cause a cone shape. Okay, this is cone shape. This is a, a, a 3D uh, image that's been filmed in 2D so we can see it in 2D but we can see the these are the shock waves okay, a shock wave um, now volcanoes explode they send shock waves out for miles there's a video on our uh, one of our threads it's it's extremely um, uh, what, what, what should I say? It's extremely coincidental. Um, now, what this shockwave is, is it, it's just 
it's just air. It's just free space. It's just it's it's the uh, soup of particles that we live and breathe and swallow the whole lot. Okay, but all this is is just a very fast disturbance in the ether. Very fast disturbance in the ether. So if this was an electron, then we would have a cone shape um, disturbance waves. Okay, disturbance wave that would protrude from the wire because the electron is shooting down the wire as fast as it possibly can. So we'd have a cone shape okay um, all the way down the wire and if there's one electron followed by the next we're just going to have like a long 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 cone shape it's just going to protrude from the wire and I believe that's the magnetic field um, but anyway you guys make up your own mind I, I guess it's it's only my belief um, okay perfect okay this, this is this is what we're seeing okay now again this image is um, the standard image that we got from the Meg team it's got to be flipped up so these these points are at the top so if we think it this is upside down okay so from zero this is zero up here this is maximum amplitude down here okay what we're doing is from zero we are picking up the magnet okay we are placing the magnet very slowly up to the top of the tube. Okay, up here is where the magnet's been placed to the top of the tube. Okay, at this point we let go. The input's been switched off. At this point we let go, and the magnet falls down the tube with a linear velocity. Okay, until it gets to the bottom of the tube. All right. So this process. Okay, where the um, output coils, two output coils are in resonance in this period here. Okay, so they're 180 degrees out of phase. They're thinking, well, this is fantastic. We're going to have a little bit of a party here. Um, and then all of a sudden the input switched off. And they go, oh, okay, it's all over. Bang. So they've got a linear decay all the way down. All right, same process as placing the magnet at the top of the copper tube. Okay, with a very high potential. Magnets, magnetic field is very high. It's at the top of the tube. We let it go from here, and we let it go, and it goes all the way down to there. Okay, bottom of the tube down there. So interesting. Um, okay, so what else? Um, I just can't think quite at the moment. Asymmetrical regaging, okay, regauge period. Regauge period is where we get the potential up again. We've got to get the potential back up, back up as high as we can. So we excite the two partnered output coils uh, in a resonant, semi resonant state where they think it's going to be a big party, okay, and then we turn it off and let it go. Um, Sorry, this video is a bit average. Um, again, it's a second video. I did one already, and it's um, it didn't record all the audio and all that sort of thing. Um, just want to point out that what I'm sharing is not new. What I'm sharing is it's old technology that that some people have just been lucky and uh, found the resonant point easily, um, or tricked the coils into being resonant at that point and they do their job. This is Graham Gunderson's machine. Did a fantastic demonstration. There's just no way that you could pick the demonstration to bits. Some people tried, um, failed miserably. Um, picking on things that were just not valid at all. It was just a miserable effort to, to um, try and discredit it, um, which again failed miserably. This just a was just a joke. Again Graham Gunderson's this is this is my some of my stuff. Um the point of this video I'm sorry, it's a really long video. I'm really, really sorry about that. The point of this video is and I, I just want to make it clear at this stage that 
we, what we want to do is we want to look at the coils as singular um, wire turn. So for example, if we if we take this image here for a second, say for example this is one turn on the transformer, and say for example this is one turn on the transformer, and this is one turn on the transformer. So what we want to do is we want to simulate the single turn on the transformer and make sure that that single turn is sufficient to be able to understand what's going on in the transformer. Okay, this image here is um, an indication of some of the reactions between the single turn. Okay, the X in the middle there means that the current, okay, on that single turn, okay, single turn just indicating a single wire, okay, is going into the page. So if we have two wires and both the currents are going into the page, then the magnetic fields, um, the, the wires attract and the magnetic field becomes one. Now, if we have one turn going into the page, okay, the current going into the page, another turn with the current coming out of the page, the dot indicates coming out of the page, so it's the current's coming towards you. Okay, at this stage, what we're looking at is we're looking at two magnetic fields that oppose each other. Okay, so a standard transformer, one turn. Okay, we'll go back to our one turn analogy. Single turn into the page. We've got current going into the page. This is our primary coil, maximum current for that coil with the applied voltage, okay, going into the page. Okay, this is enough current that it's uh, creating a, a hysteresis loop in the transformer and the hysteresis loop then because of the change in magnetic field will induce a voltage first of all on this secondary coil and the secondary coil effectively will have a current if we load it okay there's no current that will flow unless we load the coil with a resistive load um, now when the coil is loaded we have a current that comes out of the page and you can see by the arrows you can see by the structure of the um, field lines that we have opposing magnetic fields okay so these two coils or the, the, this turn and this turn will push apart this turn here will want to move out that way this turn here will want to move out that way okay these two are the opposite this one here will want to move in that way. This one here will want to move in that way. So they attract each other in that one. The turns repel each other in that one. Okay. Um, now I don't have another figure, but if we can imagine this here and these field lines on this side a second time. Okay, so we've got three wires. Currently this is symmetrical because we have one wire here, one wire here, okay? It's a symmetrical process, but if we make it asymmetrical, if we have a third coil over here, the third coil will see this coil as its primary, because the mutual coupling between these two coils will be higher than, what it, than the third coil will be with the primary coil, okay? And we're gonna trick it. We're gonna trick the coil into seeing this one as the primary. Okay, and when it sees this one as the primary, it's it, the magnetic fields, um, because it's in resonance, magnetic fields are going to shoot up. We're going to have 180 degrees out of phase. Um, the currents will, the, sorry, the magnetic fields will buck. Currents will be opposite, and it will be very high potential. The, pot the potential will be very high because obviously when you hit um, resonance, the amplitude goes up. It's, it's just part of being in resonance. So amplitude goes up, and then at that stage we've switched off our input already, and the coils are left in a state where there's high, very high potential on the coils, and they have to buck. They have to do this, and it's a linear decay over time. So the point of this video, what I wanted to do 
was really just cover um, the, this and a few other bits and pieces all in one go to try and sort of make the, the whole thing come together. Um, again, think of your coils as a single coil with a current direction on it. Uh, the magnetic fields are critical. You've got to think, think of magnetic fields and how they change in time. When they change in time, you will get um, an opposition always. You'll get an opposition um, because of, of, of equal and opposite law, um, which is Newton's law, equal and opposite. Anyway, starting to run out of puff. Um, been a long day. Um, I can't think of anything else to, to show you. Um, yeah, so it's it's equal and opposites and resonance, magnetic resonance. So again, like the Mr. Prever experiment, we, we once we have magnetic resonance, our input goes right down. Um, we get a high amplitude on the output. The uh, the amplitude on the output goes up once the resonance is achieved, um, and that's that's just standard. That's standard electronics. It happens all the all the way through electronics, as far as I know. Once you hit resonance, the amplitude goes up, um, and then you switch off your input. Um, that is the regauge part, and then there's a work region after that. So it, it creates this, and then between the two output coils, so part and output coil one, part and output coil two, they pose each other. Okay, your input coil might be over here. Um, and basically at that stage you put coils off and this is what happens with your partner and output coils. Uh, Alright, I am just rambling now, I do apologise. Um, let's call it quits here I think. Uh, I think we've done enough. I uh, do apologise again, sorry it's, it's a really long video. This is going to be a private well, at least a, a, a non-public video. It will be on the forum but um, and shared there, but it's not going to go anywhere else. Um, so please forgive me. I will cut it off now. Thanks.